is going on guys? Monk7 Mad here today with a very exciting and very interesting intro template and tutorial. Now today I am going to say that the intro at the beginning is the one that you'll be getting or learning about today. Now in the description for those that are not interested in the tutorial themselves you will be finding pretty much exactly the same as what you see. The only difference being the front cube, if it's, which one's the front cube? This one. Yeah, it won't be there, and neither will the the text. So I'll just be getting this, and then all you'll have to do is model it, um, which I will demonstrate in the tutorial in a moment, and then you would render it out, take it into the After Effects project file, which is also in the description in the uh, sort of pack. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so if that's all you're after, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, don't forget to hit the like button. It's always uh, nice to know whether you're actually appreciating this stuff because it does take a lot of time and a lot of effort to get some of this stuff done. Um, now, in terms of actually making this, what I've done is I'm going to show you basically how to sort of model a little bit. Because um, all I've done here is I've actually got a cube and I've modelled it. Now, some of the things you're going to need to know about modelling. Okay, before we can do anything, if you were to say create a cube like I have earlier. Dun 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 then you're going to want to actually modify it a little bit so at the moment the cube's a bit too big so let's just uh, reshape it using the scale tool let's make it just a little bit taller and a little bit thinner okay so when you've got the shape that you're after so we'll start off with this this is quite a nice sort of starting shape um, to be able to model it we actually need to convert it to a smart well, I call it a smart object and uh, it's an editable object and what it does is it actually creates it into an editable object and you know it's an editable object by the triangle with three points <clears throat> now on the left hand side we've got some tools this one is actually the move tool the main the main tool for just grabbing the item the one beneath is actually one for moving the the, the center point and this is quite good when trying to do things like rotation because then when you go to rotate you can rotate from the point that you're grabbing and and so on and so forth. Now, with the cube here, we are going to need to use some other tools because we don't need those exactly. We're going to need to use these, and these are known as selection tools. Now, the first one is sort of red lines, and now the doorbell goes. Even more excitement to the day. Oh, I do apologise, that was actually a parcel. Um, right, so yeah, with the cube, the first one is the line selection, and what you can do is you can choose any one of the lines, and you can actually select more than one line by pressing shift, and you can edit just those. Now, with, say, the move tool, in this case, it's not really the most exciting thing, but you can do quite a lot of stuff. Now, the one beneath it is the one that we're mainly going to be using, and that actually it looks like a grid with three selected red areas, and this is basically known as the face panel selection. And that allows you to select faces or more than one face by again pressing shift. And you can modify that face. Now, this is going to be quite important. And you have to click on a face to modify it. Now, we're going to be using some tools to, to shape. So, with my one, I've actually got the letter M engraved into it twice. And I'm going to try and demonstrate a little bit here. I'm just going to show you how to also edit one of the sides. I'll just give you an idea of how to model. Now, if you press the letter M on your keyboard, <clears throat> it's a shortcut for all the options that you can that you can modify. You could also go to selection and uh, which one is it? Sorry, it's structure, and you can modify from here. But you can see all these letters. It's basically if you press the letter M, then C, you will get the brush and the letter M and S, then you'll get the bevel and so on. But we're going to be needing to remember three. One being the knife, which is M for the keyboard, then K. Or you could do M, and we're also going to need extrude, so that's M and T. And finally, M and W for inner ex extrude inner. Now, in case you thought I said N, I'm referring to M, the letter for magnum or a Mars bar. Hey, I could go for a Mars bar right now. Um, anyway, so we're going to need to just modify this. So 
What I tend to do is I always tend to extrude inner first. So we'll press M then W. And you'll notice the mouse has now got two squares beneath it. Now if we drag in on the selection on the side here, you can actually see it moving in. I'll move it in exactly so you can see it. And the inner extrude allows us to sort of create a shape within a shape so that we don't ruin the whole structure completely. So I, I like doing that, and then I do M and T to extrude, and if you drag it inwards, then it extrudes inwards. If you bring it out, it extrudes outwards. Uh, that's quite useful to know, because we're going to be using that later on. So I'll put it there, and now you can actually use things like the scale tool again. And you can just shrink in the side, and then you can use the move tool to move it back and forth. And you can actually edit more than just the once. So say you want to extrude this little bit that I've got selected, go M, W, then MT and you can bring it in or you can bring it out it's exactly what you want and you can just reshape over and over and over again you can build masses of shapes and you know it's really quite interesting to to get into the experimenting with but uh, there's one side for example I mean you might want to change it a lot more mine's a shield I just wanted to show you basically how to model just, just very generally I mean you can do all sorts of things um, so maybe you want to, let's have a look at the bevel, shall we, and see if we can bevel it. Uh, ignore the bevel. Um, right. Can it bevel? Yeah, you can bevel it a little bit. The bevel is probably slightly better if you want to do little small versions of what I just did by bringing it out a bit um, but yeah that's that's just part of it so I'll let you experiment with that now the other one we're gonna need is the knife and the reason we need a knife is because to be able to sort of engrave we're gonna need to choose the the certain points so if we use the knife say I wanna cut the letter L into it if I just tried to draw an L here it won't won't do anything you'll just be clicking forever and you can only do one line at a time so I mean I can't do anything to that it's not doing anything now Cinema 4D only recognizes it when it goes across the whole shape of the face so in this case I've got the front shape selected and if I go the whole way across then you'll see the line and now I can actually select that one or that one and this is basically how it works and you can go through and through and through this to build more extensive shapes I mean, I could go through and build it really technical to build the letter L. Obviously, you're going to be a little bit more accurate than I am. I mean, you might want to give it a little... I don't know. Just having a think. Maybe want to give it a little pointed top or something. I don't know. Or a triangle end or something. I don't know. But... You just... Uh, you make sure that's all done and then if you want to now modify that certain bit so we'll find the bits that we want so we want the little L here maybe we'll add the point in oops ooh I'm getting annoyed with this silly undo thing right okay so we've selected that now one other thing to point out when we're making selections we can actually color certain selections in I could select any face I wanted and just color it in right now and you can only do this in this mode only on the face selection so say I wanted to color the inner bit red. I'll get the material, drag it onto the selection and now there's a red triangle and it's saying that there's a selection inside. Now I actually want to... I can't actually tell if I've selected these bits yet. Right, I want to actually modify the shape. I want to make it engraved. So I'm going to go M, W, in extrude and I'm going to go N, T and now I'm going to extrude inner. If you go too far back, you will actually go out the back of the shape, so don't go too far back. Just back a little bit. And now it's actually set in the shape. And you can see I've gone quite a long way back. Now you can actually bring it forward still at any point, so don't worry if you've gone too far back. And you can see that the whole thing is there. Now if we wanted to colour around it, just say the whole shape, you just sort of come out of the selection mode here, and then you would just get the colour that you want to so say purple. And you just drag it onto the shape and just click. Uh, is that going to work? I don't remember how this works now. Um, let's have a quick preview render, can I? Oh, hang on a minute, I've just realised what I've done wrong. Have no fear. Okay, we still have to be in the selection. 
or alternatively you do it the other way around you do the whole thing selected first so if I was to remove this if I was to color the whole thing in first with the purple then I wanted to do that bit in the middle then I get the selection while on the cube and I'd select the faces that I wanted and then I could color it it's the way that Cinema 4D identifies the the coloring and now I can preview render that yeah and you can see the the red there sinking in and purple on the outside so that's quite nice I mean the lighting is just sort of tweaking it there funny a bit but yeah it's quite nice and quite interesting how you can sort of modify it. So that's basically what I did. I just modified the shape to um, to build the shield. Now in terms of the spikes and everything else, let's have a look how we're doing for time very quickly. Ooh, okay, gone a bit over time, but never mind, okay. And the spheres, they're, they're all just done on frames. It just works as, it's the same cone. I've just replaced it somewhere else. And what it is, is at a certain time, they go one after the other. So the first one starts at, this one. Oh, wait, let me select the right one. This one. Yeah, this one. It starts at 55 and ends at 60, and then the one next to it builds from 60 to 65, and then from 65 to 70, 75, 70, 75, and so on. And all it is is changing. If I just double click on this to show you quickly. Okay, all I've done is I've basically made it so that when I'm on the coordinates see where it says X, Y and Z here when you don't want to see it just make them zero and keyframe it so here that should actually be zero yep. and then at 65 it's one and all it's doing is it's hiding it with zero because it's so small you can't see it and it's building it to one to one scale that we made it with the X, Y and Z axis and you just keyframe that along and that's it now let's go into After Effects and buff it up a bit. In case you were curious of the render settings, I'll just quickly show you that before I disappear. Uh, it's a 720 HD file, so it's 1280 by 720, 25 frames, but you can have it as 30 if you like. Um, quick time movie, global illumination is ticked, nothing else is, and I've just changed the ray depth to two, the reflection depth to one, the shadow depth to two, and I've unticked auto light. And then I would render it out, so I'd press Shift and R, being on a Windows computer. I imagine, in fact, it should be the same on a Mac as well, but I'm not too sure. And this is what we're sort of gradually building up to. So we start off, and all I've got is I've got the file here, and I've got it so that the opacity at the beginning is zero, and at 20 frames, the opacity becomes 100. Let's just turn this down because otherwise it'll take forever. Um, and then all I've done, basically all I've added in here is I've added the stock footage of the the glow. And I get that to appear slightly later on. In fact, it's uh, opacity 6 right there. So at 2.26, it's 100% opacity. And the adjustments layers contain uh, a magic bullet looks file, which is actually... The file I've actually used is called, I think it's Shock, and that's in my last video. And it's a free color correction pack. It is the best one that you will get. It is a, a really nice file selection. Um, other than that, main video for effects, there's a Gaussian blur actually here, but you don't actually need it at all because of the opacity at the beginning. Um, I've added a Twixter, but all I've done is I've slowed it down so that at this point between two and three seconds it slows down so that because the, vi the video s itself is only say 4.5 seconds long but I've extended it to 7.5 um, I slowed it down for a second in the middle so that I could apply a twitch and twitch is another plugin which should be on this file and what it does is it allows the slide so this is why the colors are sort of breaking apart from one another and they will, and the whole page is sort of sliding around, and it's just a way that, it's just imagine yourself twitching. <laughs> There's a thought, um, but it's the same thing. It's just literally just shaking the page about a bit um, and disrupting the colours. 
and make sure that's on top. If you have Twitch, that's fine. If you don't, then you won't be able to do the same sort of slide effect, but the, the file will still look equally as good. In fact, if I just turned it off, this is what it looks like. So it's still quite nice. Just the Twitch makes it so that for a second it just sort of flashes and makes it look like it's being disrupted almost, um, which I quite like, but that's just my preference. Um, and then it's just a simple case of with this uh, bit of stock footage, which I'll supply the link for, it's not mine, I'll just send you the YouTube link. Um, if you have a look at it, I've got the opacity low for the start when it comes to this bit. Now one other thing is the blend mode. So if you opposite click, click on blend mode, I've actually got it on screen, and screen allows any black bits of the video to be um, sort of removed. Although the, the scene itself is actually black anyway, so it's just to allow the the item that I've built here to be seen. And that, that's pretty much it. It's actually very, very simple if you think about it. It's just adding a stock footage and a colour correction to it to make it look so vibrant. And you can add music to it if you like. I haven't added any to mine yet, but I'm sure I will find a, a proper piece or I'll make some music for it. Um, and then you just render it out, and if you want to render it out, it's, in case you don't know, it's just simply going composition, add to render queue, and you've got a render settings option, which you just leave an output module, which you would change. I use QuickTime Movie, but you can use anything you want. Uh, if you've added audio, then you just tick the audio output. It's automatically unticked, so make sure if you have audio to tick it, click OK. Then just where you want to save it to, you output it to wherever you want to save it, and then you just hit render. That took about three or four minutes for mine to render. Um, and yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. The link is in the description for all the stuff that you're going to need. I hope that you can appreciate it, and uh, don't forget to leave us a like. And if you want to see more of these sort of videos, leave a comment. And if you have any ideas for any intros, maybe that you'd like to see, or any effects that you'd like to see. So that's it for me guys, thank you for watching, have a great day, as always, take care guys, and I'll see you later.